Welcome back to Boom Shot. I'm Kale. This is Colby. Yes, and uh, Wow. Book of Boba Fett episode two. It's it? Just, it really. It's Star Wars at its finest. Pure Star Wars. And uh, let's waste no time. Let's jump right into it. Boom. You looking for this? <laughs> All right. So let's open up with a recap. All right. You start talking. All right. So the episode opens up with Finnick and Boba questioning that dude from the last episode. Yeah. And the assassin reveals uh, who he works for. And uh, he says the mayor. Yeah, so who's yeah who works for he works for like some what was it like the the night winds or something like that right right he works for the night winds yeah and then, but who sent him was the mayor is what I meant yeah which was kind of you know kind of sus we we were all sus of the mayor at the end of the last episode but uh, that it's funny actually how they got that information out of him because night winds are known uh -huh. for being like uh, you know never revealing information they drop him into the raincore pit with no raincore and uh, he reveals the information. Dude, let me tell you, I thought I thought there was going to be a raincore, and, and I thought it was going to be Moochie. Yeah, I thought it was going to be Moochie from uh, Bad Batch. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, it's going to be a little Moochie, but no, it wasn't Moochie. So uh, then <laughs> Boba, after hearing that it could be the mayor, he goes to confront the mayor, who admonishes Boba not to be so hostile and to consider that another person could be responsible for for uh, that assassin. Yeah, he, he seemed... The mayor didn't really... I, he had I, no clue about it. Yeah, no, and I, honestly... The main, the other dude, I can't remember. I ever, I don't remember his name was the the guy with the guy that you called a girl, uh, the Twi'lek dude. Yes, the Twi'lek dude. The Twi'lek dude. He he seems he sus, seems bro. so sus. Maximum bro. sausage. Like he, he didn't want Boba to walk in there and and tell the uh, mayor that Boba had or that they didn't pay tribute, right? I don't know. It's just really weird. So I, I'm thinking he's maybe responsible, but the mayor. Uh, who's also Mark Shaiz, hints that Garza could be responsible. Dude, yeah, that was interesting. Uh, but what if it's like an Iron Man 3 situation with the Mandarin? Yeah, Where that's the true. the mayor's kind of just like a front? Yeah, like, oh, that's true, dude. It could be, it could be. Like old Trevor Boy? Or, yeah, it, it, it could be that. Or the the other dude, the Twi'lek -like dude, wants to take over from the mayor. And so he's trying yeah, to, like, be. like, I don't know, he's trying to get him in trouble. Yeah, he's trying to get him in trouble. I don't know, but... So they go to Garza's, right? Yeah, uh, they go to Garza's cantina as as the mayor sent them or uh, gave them a hint. Yeah, uh, and she tells him that the twins are coming to tat back to Tatooine. And at this point, I I kind of knew who it was, or at least no, I, I knew what family it was. Oh, dude, and can I? I'm just glad it's not the uh, what Jabba's uncle dude from. Star Wars and Clone Wars. Oh, no. That guy was so... I mean, I know he died, but dude, that guy was so annoying, dude. Oh my gosh. Anyway, continue. I'm sorry. Uh, but Boba hears the litter drums in the distance, as we all did, dude. Yeah. And it was honestly a good beat, dude. It, it was kind of sick. Dude. You, you know you know, Star Wars got good beats. And uh, signifying someone important is on their way. Yeah, and so at this moment, you're like, okay, so they just mentioned the twins, and that girl was... Uh, apparently, Boba said he's, she was sweating worse than like a bantha or something like that. I was like, dang. Do they got a lot of haircuts? <laughs> yeah, no, no joke. But uh, so Boba goes outside and meets the twins and uh, Jabba's cousins have been wreaking havoc on Nal Hutta, right? I like I like how they mentioned Nal Hutta. Interesting. Uh, I just like that they did that. Uh, Boba tells them basically to beat it and saying that they would have to kill him to take over. And I was like, that's one tall task, dude. They didn't kill him. Oh, uh, yeah. And, I mean, man literally fell into a star like Pit. It's still alive. Uh, the Huts concur and bring out their assassin, um, Black... How do you say this? Black Kersanti, also Black. known as Ber BK. Also Ber known as BK, or, uh, Kate, what, did they, what else do they call him? Santi? They call him Santi, too. Yeah, Santi. Uh, oh, deep cut, dude. Deep, deep, deep cut. But it's a fan favorite. I was reading into it before we started filming, dude. Oh, yeah. I'm hyped for this character to see where they take him. Oh, yeah. I, I just think it's cool that they brought somebody so, like, uh, I don't know, now, I want to say, like, small, but just so, like, into the comics, like, comics-oriented into the movies and shows. Like, kind of, it, I don't know, it's just really interesting to me. To me, that shows the respect Filoni and Favreau have for George Lucas. And, I mean, this, I think the first comic he appeared in was in 2015. Yeah. But still, that's more, like, real Star Wars that they're pulling from. Oh, exactly, yeah. Like, it's not just, like, made-up stuff. There, but, I mean, they, they do make stuff, but when it when it is, it's it makes sense within Star Wars. Yeah, like, uh, I don't know, I, like, isn't it pretty much... Why I don't know. Isn't the sequel series like pretty much made up on the spot? Like, wasn't that a thing? Because yeah. that wasn't what George Lucas had originally. No, he gave intended. him a script when, when yeah, he sold it they, over. Yeah, and they kind of just like threw it out the window, you know, classic. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So it this it did feel like a deep cut from the comic. It, it felt very Marvel, Marvel you know, yeah. just like Marvel be pulling stuff out of the comics like from nowhere. It was sick though, dude. I mean, yeah. 
Uh, it's just it's cool to see, and especially I love what these do. You, you gotta love some more taste. This so. guy's bad to the bone. Oh we'll, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get him we'll later. But um, after that, the Hus decide to leave for now, and Boba turns back to the back to take. As we as we said in our last episode, man's dependent. He dude. seems it's to be like relying a drug on him, dude. <laughs> uh, and he and he dreams. He has another dream, and that dream lasts for the rest of the episode. And uh, yeah, pretty much like so. It, in the dream, he recalls. Uh, back to when he was with the Tuscan Raiders and they had to take down a spice train from the pike. And yeah. I don't know, it was really cool. Like he ended up stealing speeders from that gang that we saw in the first episode in one of the flashbacks and they take over the train and they get all the loot from it. And at the end, Boba gets like this gift from the leader of the Tuscans and it's like this lizard, lizard that piece. blows spice into Boba's face and then the lizard crawls up his nose and Boba goes and picks a stick from uh, tree, this random dude. tree but he has like these we see flashbacks to him and uh at uh Camino we see flashbacks to the Sarlacc pit like he was in the Sarlacc pit and like in the tree was literally like surrounding him just like the Sarlacc was and it was it was interesting to me that the connection uh Camino you know is it's all pretty much water yeah and then that's what Tatooine used to be right yeah and so it was it was kind of cool to me to see that connection yeah for like, sure i mean every i don't know everything about like they're very much Opposites and planets like Camino's full yeah. of water. Yeah, I don't know, but not Camino. I mean, it doesn't exist, I think it. so. So, do you think every Tuscan Raider goes to that same tree with the same lizard that goes up their nose and, and gets their stick? Yeah, I see. I don't know if that's. I don't know if like probably because I don't feel like there's many trees on Tatooine. That's what so, I was thinking. Yeah. So I feel. I feel like yeah, that's the case. But it, it was like an acid trip for Boba, like <laughs> for real. It was like a man's having a dream within a dream. He's yeah, like dreaming about a dream he had, like which is amazing. But uh, he takes that stick and he ends up making his own gaffy stick, dude. And let's just say his gaffy stick looked beautiful, dude. Yeah, dude. For a second, I don't, I was probably the only one, but I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. But for a second, I thought this was gonna be a flash forward, and he was coming back in his in his armor and stuff after Mando season two. Oh was yeah, like, yo, I'm back and just saying hey to the homies, bro. Dude, that would be sick. I mean, he probably will, dude. We'll see that. That would be sick, man. But at the end of the, uh, the, the I just season. love how much attention to detail they put into him making the gaffy stick. Like, you know, he oh, cuts everything off and then he uh shaves the Carves top it part. Off. Yeah, and like uh whittles into the wood. It was really sick. I just like that part. And then at the end, uh well actually we'll get into that later because it's actually my favorite part of the episode. I don't want to reveal it right now. So, that's pretty much a recap of the episode, uh, a very short recap. So, let's get into some big questions that we had. Uh, you, you go ahead with the first question. What so, the next question? I, I just want to know, who is that very skilled Tuscan Raider dude? The, she gets on the train, or he gets on the train, we're not sure whether it's a she or he right at this point. Gets on the train, like jumps off the speeder dude. Like, grabs on the train, just, like, gets in there dude. and starts waxing people like there's no tomorrow. Dude, yeah, full full speed with the speeder, right? straight to the train, jumps oh, yeah. off it, it explodes, and then, like... Dude, she hit the train at, like, a, like a perfect, like, 30, 45-degree <laughs> angle, dude, and just jumps off, like, catches on, like, Spider-Man. I felt like I was watching a Marvel movie, dude. And then and then it shows it from, like, Boba's perspective on top of the train, and yeah. you just see the pipe falling one by one. Yeah, no, and then it shows it from the side of the train, and she's just going through, like, dude, or it's... Go I, I don't know what it is, but the Tuscan Raider just going through and like waxing dude, it was sick dude that i think we're calling her a she for now or he yeah i think I, i'm pretty sure they confirmed it's a she but but so dude she was going ham oh she I was, was like dude for a second i was like dude four sense it oh yeah like, it might be honestly dude but i, I just wonder who, who it is like no nah, i'm joking do we know what tuscan raiders look like underneath the mat like and not from the movies and i'm sure in the comics someone will figure like there there's something like that but i've never seen what they look like under the under the mask but also i feel like they would just uh like kind of like they did with Bob and just adopt them into their into their culture really yeah and, so it yeah. could be any type of species yeah that's that's true it really could be but they didn't get bobo mask which i thought was interesting so maybe maybe humans don't get masks if that's the case i don't know but that's what i want to know and dude really could go toe to toe with Luke. Not gonna lie. <laughs> dude, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be serious when I said force sensitive, but really fighting like she was, dude. Nah, <laughs> you know, just forcing She's people out the window. Damn, we, we really couldn't see what was going on down there. She really could have been. Dude, imagine. <laughs> nah, ain't no, ain't no way. It's like that Wookiee Jedi from Star Wars: The Clone Wars, dude. You remember the youngling? <laughs> yeah, dude. that was like the best part of that show, dude. Uh, so speaking of Wookies. Uh, the next biggest question we have, or maybe the biggest question yeah. from this, is is we already we already said his name. Who is the Wookiee? Uh, and what is his role going to be in the show? 
So, yeah, like we mentioned, the Wookiees, Black Chris Anton, Santee, BK. I think we'll call him BK because that just rolls off the, the tongue a little bit better. Yeah, but officially Black Chris Anton. Yeah, officially Black, Black Chris Anton. And so in the comics, if I'm understanding this correctly, he and Boba are kind of, you know, they work together, which I, is kind of why they shared that weird kind of look yeah. whenever they met. Which I love, dude. I think, I yeah. think uh, Jabba, former employers of them both, yeah. sent them on a mission together. Or something like that, or Darth Vader, or somebody. We need to read more about it. Yeah. But definitely, definitely really cool. And I've heard brumblings that Black Crescenta might be in the Obi Wan Kenobi show. Uh, that I th- is it confirmed that there was? I, I think there was a mission in the comics where he, he went to go kill Obi Wan. Right. And so yeah, it that would be amazing. That would if we be saw amazing. that in the show. Didn't yeah, it? but I as for his role in this show, see, I don't know if if they're gonna make him like a like. Somebody who just cameoed just for the memes and, yeah. like, not really going to serve any huge role in the show. I don't think so. But with the way the show is building up to Boba versus the twins, that's what it seems like at this point, like, because the, the twins acted like they weren't going to give up on this. And we might see him, we might see a uh, Black Chrysanthemum v, v. Boba. We might, we might see that. And that and, would be sick, man. I mean, and Boba's killed, uh, he's killed a lot of bounty hunters. He's killed Cad Bane, confirmed from Clone Wars, which. I don't know if they've made that canon, but it was it was going to be in the Clone Wars episode. I I still hope to see Cad Bane in this show. No, I would love to see that too. Like I, I'd honestly be okay if they retconned that, but like, dude, imagine imagine Boba versus Black Crescenta, dude. That would be a sick fight to watch. Best Scar versus oh, be Wookiee, so dude. Sick. And you mentioned something earlier about uh, oh uh, Black Crescenta uh, having yeah. metal knuckles, dude. Oh yeah, metal fingers, man. Yeah, and Wookiee, and also about uh, Wookies and Trandoshans are like huge rivals, and they like hate each other because Trandoshan uh, Kashyyyk are like right next to each other, and Trind- Trandoshans are traditionally better at hunting Wookies, and so they kind of got we we actually saw that in the, uh, in the Clone Wars. Remember that one episode? Oh episode? yeah, yeah. So, can we see uh, uh, the return of a certain lizard, ba- Bosky? Can we see? Can we see Bosk return? <laughs> Your favorite character, dude. I love Bosk, dude. Star Wars Battlefront Two, Bosk yeah. is a menace, bro. But that Bosk Boba team up versus Black Chrysanthemum. That would be sick, man. I mean, I and, feel like, I feel like it could be. Uh, dude, Floney basically made the Clone Wars with George Lucas, so he can pull anything out of it that he wants to. And Boba and Bosk were teammates, and like Bosk taught Boba a lot. Yeah, yeah I, def- was young I definitely feel like it's building up to a fight with Black Chrysanthemum. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I don't. Do you think Boba could win this fight? We haven't seen much of Black Chrysanthemum, but from the comics, dude, apparently he's just a monster. We haven't seen much of Boba either, dude. We've seen him in the back of the tank. That's pretty much it. <laughs> and flashbacks. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, after that, after that fight with the Nightwing assassins, I'm not sure, dude. I don't know if I trust Boba. Yeah, I mean, I feel like. I feel like they're kind of building him up to be like the next, or at least it would be cool like to be the next Java, but but doing it in his own way. Yeah, which is kind of what they hinted at in the first episode so, for sure. So I feel like he's like and he and he didn't kill the assassin either. That yeah. Like, so which they which they ended up getting sniped anyways, but it wasn't Boba that did it. So I feel like he has more mercy. For oh for sure yeah. And so he's doing it in his own way, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. It'll be cool to see where he goes. And speaking of where this show goes, good segue. <laughs> where is this show headed? Like, what is what we kind of mentioned this uh, while we were talking about our last question, but where is the pen, what is the penultimate or the ultimate point they're heading to in the show? It's hard to tell right now because a lot of it's been flashbacks. Yeah, but I feel like that trend's going to continue. I feel like they're going to have real time flashback, real time flashback. Yeah, and I, I love it, dude. I like what they're doing. Yeah, because I I have a friend who's kind of complaining about this show and. I uh, like I basically pointed out that they're trying to tell two stories in one in one show. They're trying to tell Boba's past, what happened after the Starlight Pit up until we meet him again yeah. in Mando, and what hap- what's happening now. And so as for what's happening in the past, I mean obviously we'll see we'll see him up until the point. Now I don't I'm not gonna say up until the point that he meets Mando, but close to that point where we get to see may, maybe we get to see him when he picks up Fennec Shan. We get to see that exchange a little more. Yeah, that'd be cool. But uh then as for the future it i mean like like i said or like we said i think it's gonna head toward uh an encounter with uh black chrysanthemum yeah i feel like i feel like that's what the show was building up to be especially like with the with the changing of the guard yeah and with, it with the huts and all yeah and it just it looks like boba's got a lot of contesters to his throne so it looks like he's gonna be playing defense a lot in the present 
because he's got the twins, and also I think I still think that other Twilight dude. I still feel like he's a he's a contestant to the throne as well. I don't really know if he sent the the Nightwing assassins. I, like yeah. the, I don't know if the Hut sent the Nightwing assassins. I feel like that guy did. So no, we got we got some contestants to the throne for sure. Yeah, I think the Huts aren't going any away anytime soon. No oh, heck no, dude. Heck no. So and I'm honestly glad you know as long as long as it's not Jabba's uncle, give me some Huts, dude. <laughs> Yeah, it was cool to see for sure. Yeah. So, uh, finally, as we wrap up this uh, installment of the Book of Boba series, let's just head into our, our takeaways, our thoughts. So, what, what, what do you think about this episode? My favorite part of this episode was the vintage Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars world building. That's hard that's, to say. That that's, is, a, that's a tongue tie. I'm sorry for the script, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were putting this together, and I, I stumbled on it when we were talking about it. Yeah. The, the classic Star Wars world building there. that's what i love about this episode maybe maybe we could put it a different way but but you know what I mean. yeah it felt very vintage and uh as you said star wars theory big star wars channel um he he said that this was pop, probably his favorite piece of star wars content since the return of the jedi and and he was, yeah i was watching that and he was saying uh i think he liked this episode as a whole more than he did the finale of mando season two and that's that's saying something dude. and man was a big meme after that episode after he cried when now, he i don't blame him dude so, yeah so it was emotional but the, still the world building this episode did was phenomenal yeah we we both really loved that like what favreau and filoni have managed to do with bringing like with world building and bringing it back to like vintage star wars like this feels like a very much star wars story yeah and honestly now that's out of like in their hands and not in you know the crappy people who wrote the sequel trilogy's hands uh we're gonna get some good star wars on disney for sure, for sure for sure but my favorite thing and i mentioned this earlier and i'm not gonna cap dude it's just like it's just like in hawkeye about about <laughs> rogers the musical dude favorite favorite thing from this episode is that that tuscan raider tribal dance dude it was beautiful that was I, sick man I was it, bobbing it just starts it starts with the that just that insane tuscan raider and boba just like dancing around the fire and then everybody slowly joins and they're just like it's bobbing dude I, that I, was fine man the, I don't know why. I just, I just random musical scenes like that. I don't like musicals, but random scenes like that just give me joy, you know. I, dude, I like the whole, the whole cinematic elements of the show and the the audio, man. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, the audio is amazing. And then another thing is the the LED technology that they use instead of like green screen stuff. That it, it makes everything look I so good. What they call it? I watched the behind the scenes on Mandal. What, what was it they called? I don't remember what they called it, but it, it, I, whatever it is, it's, it's like this huge thing. Like but, these huge LED, like things you see like football stadiums, like these huge LED panels. Like it just makes everything look so real. But yeah, like as the as the actors and stuff are moving, the the scenery behind them moves on the yeah. On the it's so it's, sick. It's nuts, man. And it just it it really adds an element. Like you could be in that world. Like I typically in Marvel, especially in Marvel movies, like you can see. CGI, yeah. but like for for this like for this show like it looks like they built legit Moss Espa <laughs> for for this show. I think Which honestly with Disney's budget, I wouldn't be shocked. They're they're changing the game with this new tech, bro. Man. Oh yeah, I mean you can say what you want about Disney Plus is uh, you know the content that they drop. It may be sparse, but it's good. So I'll take it. But anyway, sure. that's pretty much all we got. Tuscan Raider Dance for the win. Still like Rogers the Musical better, but I mean, you got anything else? Nah, man, it's a good, good episode. I'm excited to see where they go. Oh, forward. for sure. Episode three is gonna be a banger. We'll, we'll be we'll covering be here, it, man. And we'll be covering it hopefully earlier, but we'll be covering it, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.